Good evening, this is a short screencast to demonstrate how to set up a floating category list in Shopify. A lot of Shopify themes have a left-hand sidebar and that makes them a good candidate for using categories uncomplicated, but some themes don't have a left-hand sidebar. So if I look at my product store here, actually at the moment there's no left-hand sidebar showing. If I scroll down here, the products go full width of the page. And this is very good for responsive design. It's very common that new themes like this one, which is called debut, um, often don't have a left-hand sidebar. So I've designed a new floating category list to deal with that. So we're going to go through the process of importing products. If I select products, import, I'm going to import them from a CSV sheet, upload that file, and it shows me there are 53 products in the sheet uh, and picks out the first one and checks that it's right. So I start that import process. This will now take a few minutes to complete. Great, so now I've got a list of products here and uh, I got those set up inside my store. The next step is to start grouping them into collections and making categories and arranging those categories in a hierarchy. Um, before we get started, I'm gonna go through to the app. So I go through to the floating category list uncomplicated app and I see this page. This is the default starting page. Uh, I've got a storefront password set up at the moment, so if I enter that password and click refresh, it pulls from the menu system uh, the list of categories we have so far. Now at the moment this is a vanilla store, I've just uploaded some products to it so there are no categories set up uh, and so the next stage now is to create a few collections to put products into those collections and then use the menu system to point at those collections to build our category list. So I select collections, create collection. I'll create one called photography. I could give it a description, but I'm not gonna do that at the moment. Again, it could use automatic tagging to select the products, but for now I'm gonna keep it really simple and manually select products. I'm gonna edit the website SEO so I get a nice uh, URL structure. Happy with that, collection slash photography looks good and save collection. I'll leave this as is, but I will create another collection. This one I'll call cameras. Again, manually selected. I'm going to edit the search engine optimization, the, uh, the URL path there to show cameras as a subcategory of photography. So by putting a dash in there because Shopify, Shopify doesn't allow us to put slashes. I'll save this collection and this time I'm going to add some products. So I'll search for cameras and I'll select the cameras and put them inside this collection. I think we've got a couple more. One and two. Great. And that's sorted. And next we'll, we'll create another collection called lighting equipment again manual again I'll ma manage the SEO to say that it's photography lighting equipment here I'll add some product no these products are there we go a couple of those and I think I have in my catalog Floor light. Great, and I'm then going to create another collection, the third of three for now. Call this one tripods. Again, manual, edit the SEO, photography, photography, tripods, save collection, and we'll add some products in there. One, two, three. So those three products get added. And now at this point, I've got some collections set up. Four collections, a parent collection, photography, and three sub collections, which I'm gonna put inside it. But at the moment, these are all just a flat structure. Shopify collections are entirely flat. What uncomplicated categories does and, and floatless uncomplicated does is actually organize this into a hierarchy using the Shopify menu system. So if I go into online store, navigation, I've got two menus at the moment but I'm going to add a menu. The menu I'm going to add I'm going to call 
photography In, inside the photography menu I'm going to add a couple of menu items they're going to point to the collections I've just created and they were cameras lighting equipment and tripods and now I select those collections from the list cameras point to cameras lighting equipment points to oops, lighting equipment and tripods points to tripods I save that menu and at this stage I'm going to go back to the app now by going back to the app we see that initially nothing has changed because we haven't refreshed it so part of the reason we've come back to the app and part of the reason we're going through this process of refreshing the, the category list is to check the work we've done so far to check that it's starting to appear as we want it to appear for the category list we're going to display so here I can see photography I can see there are three sections underneath and I can see that those products I added are showing up there on the right hand side now at the moment I'm saying that the category top level is the whole thing it's, it's, it's set at top level which means that when I look at my storefront my category list will actually display the entire menu system and that's not what I want what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, navigation and I'm going to create the master category menu so I'm going to call it categories I'm going to add have a single menu item in here photography that links to the photography collection and I could put things in the photography collection I haven't for now but I'll save that and when I go back to the app and refresh again very important to remember to refresh what I'll see now is a categories menu that contains photography and then the photography menu contains cameras, lighting equipment and tripods so we're now going to select a, the top level category if I select categories a new list renders and now we can see our category list beginning with the top level categories in this case photography and underneath it cameras lighting equipment tripods when we add more top level categories that feature underneath categories they'll appear in this list and that's the complete cycle um, what we're going to do now is repeat the process over and over again adding more collections linking them together with menu items and then coming back into the app and doing a refresh of the list what I can also do now is check that the menu is being produced in the front part of the site so if I click on one of these links I open up a new tab and here I can see the cameras collection I've created and on this left hand side this is the floating category list menu as the page scrolls up and down the floating category list stays on the left hand side if I want to collapse at any point I can and I can expand that category list depending on what's most convenient. Whatever state I leave the category list in, I can refresh the page and it will remember the state that that's in. And as I browse through the collections, they'll still be there. If I expand it again, I can move between the collections, between the categories, and then minimize as I'd like. So the next part of the process is to go back into the app itself and now create the remainder of my category tree so I'm going to go through exactly the process I did before by going to collections creating collections of my products and then linking them together using the online store navigation these menu items here So now we've got a good list of collections. All the collections are populated with products. The next stage is to go through to the navigation and start linking them together into the category tree that we're building here. All the time going back to the app and frequently refreshing the list so that we can see the very latest view of what our current category list look like and check that we've actually got the menus and the collections joined up correctly so that they're showing here as we'd like.
So now I've refreshed my category list and I can see that I've got a correctly set up set of categories here. Um, I'm seeing that these, these categories have products in. I haven't put products in the parent categories, but I could. Um, I'm also noticing that mobile phones isn't set up correctly, so it hasn't found the subcategories in there. Um, so I'm just going to go back into navigation and check that I've created the mobile phones menu correctly. Back into mobile phones. Sure enough, I have created the mobile phones menu, and now it's a matter of just checking that I've called it exactly the same thing. Here it's referred to as mobile phones, and if I go back into the technology menu, here I've called it mobile phones with a capital P. Shopify sees those two things differently, so it's really important that the title I use here is exactly the same title of the menu that's referred to here. So now, when I go back into apps and refresh the list again, now here on the right hand side we can see those phones correctly organized. The final check is of course to go to the front end of the site. What I've done so far is left the settings in their default setup. In a separate screencast I'll cover some of the settings and the way you can display things. If I go here and refresh this page, I can see I've got my category list. Because I'm in tripods, it's expanded just tripods and the top level categories, or the, the first level categories above them. If I go into photography, it takes me up to the top of photography. If I go into technology, it then expands the um, uh, subcategories within that. If I go into computers, then there are just these four desktops and I can start seeing the products. And critically, these, this menu is hovering over the top of my product list. So there's no sidebar, there was no embed or install, I didn't have to adjust my theme at all. All of this is configured automatically and it means I can allow my customers to browse through categories. So that concludes this screencast. I hope it gives you a good sense of how basically to set up floating category list. And I wish you the best of luck with your store. Thanks very much.